Hi again, Mark here from TalkingBass.net. Today we're going to be looking at good old bass straps and I'm going to give you three top tips for buying and setting up your strap. As always, you can grab a copy of the lesson material from TalkingBass.net, just follow the link in the info below, and while you're there, check out the lesson map where you'll find hundreds more free lessons on every topic imaginable. Then sign up for the free membership where you'll gain access to even more free bass resources and downloads like the Scale Reference Manual ebook, and there's much, much more. So, go check it out. Okay, so this is a bass strap. It's something that we all need for our bass and it's something that we get very little guidance on when we start playing. But the type of strap that you choose and how you attach it to the bass is all absolutely fundamental stuff that can have a huge impact on your playing in both performance and practice. So, tip number one, get yourself a nice wide leather strap. There are a bunch of great brands out there like Levi's Leathers and you can pay anything from just a few bucks to hundreds of dollars. Now, you don't need anything super expensive, I'd just say make sure that it's pretty wide and durable. I personally always go for a minimum of four inches in width, so this is across at the shoulder there. And that's great for distributing the weight across the whole shoulder rather than focusing it in all in you know, one spot. These straps that I've got here, these are Minotaur straps, and this one's uh, four and a half inches across. Perfect width for distributing that weight. Nice, tough leather, you know, really, really good strap at a really affordable price. Next, for tip number two, adjust the strap length so the base is in the same playing position, whether you're sitting or standing. Now, this is something that I've always done and originally learned from Billy Sheehan. He's a huge advocate of this method and as he points out, if you do any amount of seated practice, you want to know that the bass is going to feel the same when you stand. It's amazing how different the bass can feel at different heights and you can really mess up your playing if you've learned everything while you've been sat down. So, here I am seated. I've got the bass sat there on the leg and I've set the strap height so that when I stand, it doesn't move. So, it's always going to be the same height. Also, as a secondary consideration, look at how I've got the base sat there. I've got it on this left leg so that it's centrally placed. If I was to put it on the right leg, I kind of have to pivot the body around. If I place it there in the middle, sat pretty much on the left leg more like a classical guitarist, it means that when I stand, it's exactly the same position, okay? So if I was to place it on the right leg, it's again not going to be the same position as standing. Another important reason for setting the strap in this way is protection of your hands and wrists. You want to always avoid curling the hands over and bending the wrists here. When you curl them over, the tendons get compressed in there and then when you start using the fingers, you strain all of those tendons and you end up with things like carpal tunnel syndrome. So you always want to try and keep a straight wrist here. So with that in mind, if you were to um, place the base too high up here, this hand, the picking hand, is going to get curled over too much. And then if you were to have it too low, then the fretting hand is going to get curled over too much. And again, you're going to get a lot of compression in those, uh, in those tendons. Now, there is one small caveat involved in all of this stuff, and it's something that I don't hear addressed that often. A lot of this um, straight wrist and strap height stuff is going to be influenced by our arm length. Now, arm length and wingspan can vary a lot from person to person, and the usual measurement for normal proportion is that of your height. So, fingertip to fingertip, it's usually around your height. That's the general measurement. But for some people, you know, they might have short arms or some people have long arms. I'm five foot ten with a six foot three wingspan, so I have really long arms. So I have to be quite careful with how I set my base because I'm always going to be, you know, getting into that curled wrist kind of uh, zone. Whereas somebody with really short arms are less likely to have any problems there. So always bear that in mind when you're setting your strap length. Even though it's a good rule of thumb to have it set at exactly the same height as when you sat and when you stood, you might have to make a few adjustments here and there if you've got really, really long arms like me. So we have a strap, we've set the strap length for a good playing position, now we just need to attach it securely. Now attaching a strap is easy enough, you just place these holes over those pegs, you know, these pegs here on the base, great, but as anyone that's ever played bass for any amount of time knows, that's not enough. You've got to secure that strap to the base. Relying on the basic holes over those pegs will not cut it. Your base will hit the deck at some point. So, the most common way of securing the strap to the base is strap locks. 
Shayla and Dunlop are probably the most popular and they work great most of the time. But there are some downsides. Now, you have to replace the original pegs on the base and that means messing around with potentially different screw sizes. Uh, they can also be quite noisy or squeaky at times and they're fairly expensive for what they are. So for tip number three, you wanna get yourself some of these. This is a washer from a Grolsch flip bottle top and it makes for the perfect strap lock. It might look like a really cheap, tacky way of securing uh, you know, a strap onto your new beautiful bass, but trust me, they work great and they're used by bass players and guitarists all over the world. It's an incredibly common form of strap lock and I prefer them to the, you know, the big name strap locks. They're easy to fit on there, they're reliable, they're silent, and there's no messing around with the original pegs. But best of all, you can buy huge packs of them online from places like Amazon for just a few bucks. So I've got a huge stash of them, and then every time I get a new bass, you know, another one goes on, you know, to the, to the new strap. And if you like Grolsch, that's even better. For every bottle that you drink, you potentially save the life of a bass. Ding dang do. So in terms of fitting the washers, you just want to fit the strap as normal, make sure it's adjusted to the right height, fit the holes over the pegs, and then take a washer and then you just fit it over the top of the peg. Now what you'll find the first time that you do this is that it'll be pretty tight. So you've got to sort of maneuver it around as you're putting it on there, but once it's on, it should be fine. And that'll just hold the uh, strap in position there. And like I said, no need for taking out the pegs, none of that stuff, it's completely silent. And then when you wanna take the strap off, dead simple, you just uh, take that off too. And really, really simple. So that's my top three tips for buying and setting up a bass strap. Remember to uh, like this video if it's helped and subscribe to the Talking Bass channel. Also hit that little notification bell to be informed of the weekly releases. I release a video every Friday. Also remember to go on over to talkingbass.net, just hit the link in the info below and you'll find hundreds more free lessons on every topic imaginable. Also sign up for the free membership to gain access to all of the other bass goodies and download to those eBooks like the Scale Reference Manual. Okay. Okay, I'll see you next week.